Greetings America, welcome to 1984. James Knox here and we're going to do a little installment of Waveguide 101. And today I brought in a little piece of 18 gigahertz. Uh, this is a piece of flex waveguide, so it'll flex around. Now as long as you maintain the bend radius on this, like you know you can't, you know if you bend it like that it's going to start getting lossy, it's a bad deal. And basically what this is, See, it's rectangular. It's rectangular waveguide, and you can see it's silver inside, and it's basically links, like in a chain, to form a tube. And then this is brass, and all this becomes a ground field, okay? So you can think of the RF energy as being a positive potential with electromotive force, and that it's being held within this ground field, you know, kept inside the, the hole, and basically going up to the feed horn in the antenna and that is being blown onto the parabola and then it gets beamed out to the other end. Okay, so the next part we got here, this is a piece of rigid waveguide. Okay, now basically the same exact idea except you can't move this. This is, this is rigid. This is a 90. Now these pieces when they're made they're going to be put together and then they're going to be swept which is where you take a uh, sweep generator, an RF generator that generates you know from this frequency to this frequency it sweeps those frequencies and then you're looking at it with a uh, network analyzer in order to check the return loss so you have these two pieces of gear, you're putting this out and you're looking at what's coming back and then you take a little hammer and you very gently dent tune these it's one of the reasons these get so expensive is because they're hand dent tuned. a technician has to sit there and actually dent tune this uh, waveguide for low visoir. And you get about a half a dB loss per connection. Now that, and you can get them down to a tenth dB or two tenths of a dB if you use waveguide washers in these connections. Um, I used to use them a lot when they would send them, but oftentimes they don't send them. Okay, so our next part, okay, I'm going to show you this first. This there, that's a bent up piece of 18 gigahertz elliptical waveguide. This is an elliptical waveguide connector. Elliptical waveguide is the same as this, except it's an ellipse, and it's a solid piece of copper that's actually, when it's formed, it's basically at, uh, excuse me, quarter wavelength, and the signal actually, like this, up the uh, elliptical waveguide. That's pretty high level stuff. We get into how RF travels through waveguide. Um, again, you can think of it as the ground field is holding the positive energy inside and then you've got a you know it's being drawn up okay you know, it's just like closing a circuit on a battery you know, if you take two wires on a battery and you arc it you know the, the energy is drawn there okay now anybody that really knows about this stuff don't bust me because this is pretty weak on the theory part I'm just trying to make it easy for everybody and as I go along as you notice I start throwing more things in so I'm really trying to what I'm trying to do is take some really high level stuff and make it palatable for everybody assuming you can stand my ugly mug so anyway going forward we have on here also this right here this is going to be an air connection because you have what's called a dehydrator it's going to be on the wall somewhere it's going to be connected now you're going to pressurize this waveguide up to about three and a half psi and it's going to pressure up and then it's going to suck that air out and it's going to make sure the air is dry put more dry air in and suck it out because you can't have any moisture in here. Moisture reflects energy which is horrible. It causes all kinds of problems with uh, linearity and uh, distortion, intermodulation and all these things. Okay, as well this connector has what we call slugs. And these are basically just screws with a tit on the end of them. Now, there's a little tit on the end of them and they go in, you know, this is a cavity so they go into the cavity. So you tune them in and out with the sweep gear, just like when you're dent tuning one of these, and adjust it for low visoir. Now when you're doing waveguide and you have ultra premium waveguide, which is what we like to use, um, and it's basically manufactured and swept for 29 dB or better of return loss, and that's what I like to see when I'm tuning waveguide. Now you only need uh, one tunable connector. You can put them on the top side, which would be at the antenna, um, that's fine uh, as long as you seal them like this one. Um, 
and to get the best tune really you don't need a tunable one in the house where the radio is you know you can do that and that's fine you put one top side you can oftentimes get a better tune I don't like putting them outside because it's a place for the gaskets in here the little o-rings uh, to fail and even the silicone to fail you know, it's all up to whoever designs the system, though. It's kind of one of those things. It's my preference because I know I can tune it from downstairs uh, just as good, but not everybody can do that. Um, tuning waveguide, sweeping waveguide is kind of a finesse deal. I've done thousands and thousands of these things, so um, I spent months doing nothing but that for a couple times. It kind of got really sucky because you got to unload about... Uh, 500 pounds of test equipment at every site and you could easily hit four or five sites in a day so anyway that's kind of the uh, the basis of waveguide and uh, you know it goes up so this this part would be connected to the radio say or this part would be connected to the antenna and again in the radio you're gonna have a generator source you know RF source that's gonna connect to here and then that's gonna go out to the connector and then your elliptical waveguide is going to go up the tower to another connector like this to possibly another piece of flex. Personally, I like to take the top side connector and connect it right to the back of the feed horn, which looks much like this, except it curls around on the end and points back at the parabolic dish. So the energy gets blasted out at the dish and reflects back out in a beam with a specified beam width, depending on how big the parabola is. Okay, so that's the first rundown of uh, Waveguide 101. We'll let that one soak in because it's about seven minutes long, and I'll do another one in a minute with this little drawing right here. We'll go ahead and put this up so you can look at it and get a little taste. Uh, I will be talking about this one next. Peace. God bless America. I love my country.